In this video, we're going to look at MIDI CCs, what they are, and how to change them on the Spitfire interfaces. MIDI CCs are continuous controller changes, so in essence they are controls that when varied over the course of time, something changes on the software which in turn affects the sound. To jump in, MIDI CCs can be affected in two ways. Every DAW has automation to affect MIDI CCs. So for example, if I was to go into the controllers here, I can select the mod wheel and I can draw in MIDI CC data here. Now, when we look at the interface on the right hand side, the middle fader is going to increase. And we can hear here that the sound is increasing in its strength. Its timbre becomes slightly harsher. So we're affecting the sound over time. The other way that these CCs can be changed is to record them in, in real time using MIDI controller hardware. So for example, if I now hit record, I can record that data in, in real time, which will give us a much more expressive and realistic performance. So how do we know which CC is assigned to which control? So any control on the Spitfire interface can be right clicked and we can see that there is a MIDI assignment to remove CC11, or in this case, CC1, or on the reverb, it would be CC19. Again, the release would be CC17. So they all have their own independent MIDI CCs that we can configure. Now, what happens if you wanted to say, change that? So on the Spitfire plugin, you would have to ensure that your MIDI controller is outputting different MIDI messages. So if I was to go into the software, which controls my MIDI hardware, I can customize here CC1 to become something different. Now, when I go to here, I can remove MIDI CC1 and I can learn automation. By moving the fader, now when I right click, I've assigned that MIDI fader to CC number 43. So what about in contact? So in contact, this all works exactly the same way. So we can right click, we can remove the MIDI CC automation and then we can learn it in the exact same way that we just did. But we also have this advanced feature called the automation tab, which is where we can see there is this MIDI automation option. Here, we can then choose to simply drag and drop controls onto the interface. And we can now see that this is MIDI CC number two. Another really cool feature of the contact automation pane is the ability to reverse the polarity of a control. So if I go to this from percentage to feature in the bottom left hand corner of the automation tab, I can change this dynamics control on the long flotando pulses to go from 100 down to zero, which is the opposite of the patch directly below it. Now, if I was to then also do the same for expression, we can now see when looking on the interface that both patches are behaving opposite to each other, which allows us to add a kind of crossfade between these two patches. So if I was to make this bottom patch really quite ambient, by adding reverb, bringing in the uh, really distant mics, and I was to bring this first patch in to be the really close microphones, we'll hear a lot more of a drastic change. So now when I hit record, we're getting a variation over time, which is a little bit more creative. 
If you have any further questions about MIDI CCs, do get in touch with us at spitfireaudio.com forward slash support. Thanks for watching Spitfire Clips. Let us know if it was too long, too short, too fast or too slow in the comments down below. Hit like if we answered your question and subscribe for more clips, tips, tricks and exclusive Spitfire content.